Hey Crock Posse, Aunt Lou here, and today we are gonna be making good gravy beef roast in our slow cooker. This is where you say, oh, we're having a lot of fun. Oh, while having a whole lot of fun. another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy and Aunt Lou. And today we're cooking up another recipe from RecipesThatCrock.com. A very good recipe. In fact, so much that Aunt Lou called it good gravy beef roast. See, Aunt Lou's the queen when it comes to good gravy stuff. We did that good gravy chicken a few weeks mm -hmm. back and it was very popular on the site, very popular on the channel, and very popular in our house too. It was mm -hmm. super good. And well, I thought weird to put cheese on chicken like that. Not it's weird. mama. So good. Mama put this recipe together and whenever I was trying to figure out, whenever I did the chicken one, the very first one, um, I was like, Chris, what do I call this? And she's like, well, what's the strongest flavor? You know, we're trying to figure out. I was like, it just has good gravy. And she's like, well, call it good gravy. And I'm like, okay, so here we are. Yeah, those methods work on chicken. We're going to try them on beef. And what you need is beef. We have about a three, three and a half pound chuck roast right there all ready to go in the pot. Mm. You have a can of cream of mushroom soup. You have a can of beefy mushroom soup. You have a packet of brown gravy, which is going to turn into good gravy. And you have a packet of ranch I'm going to get ratted out. That um, would be in the wrong. packet, but Mikey like busted it wide open. And so it it's in a... Kind of looked like it snowed all over our kitchen. And then you want some pepper jack cheese. I say some pepper jack cheese because we don't know how much you're going to use yet because you just want this to cover. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to take our soups first. Here is get our... Get it right, man. Get it right. mushroom soup. It smells so good. I love mushrooms. Some of y'all out there just really don't care for mushrooms. I'm sorry, but they go really good with this. If you want to substitute, uh, maybe like a cream of celery and then beef stock would work. Like a... Beef consomme, know, maybe? Maybe beef consomme. I don't know if that would be too strong, Get though. that all over. Don't just be putting it oh in one spot. Oh, my gosh. You know what? What? I have to work. Chris is out of the house today, and I've already got another supervisor. Mm-hmm. But the, to me... Beef and mushrooms go really, really, really well together. I am not a mushroom fan, to be perfectly honest, um, unless they're morels. And oh, so, um, I morels on but I, yeah, um, but I love this recipe. Every, I mean, I've made it. I don't even know a bunch of ways. Hey, you're going to be putting the broth in your. Can. I'm telling them on this time. You're going to take your broth. Not yet. Your quarter cup. Because I can. And put it I to the side. Can. Oh my goodness. And put it to the side. But I still He's not doing up. this right, people. I still have to stir it up. I am getting it. I think I just got some in my eye. Not sure how to do That's that. That's what you get for not listening to me. Packet of ranch. What? Uh -huh. Packet of ranch right over the top. Kind of like you would your Mississippi roast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would you open that for me so it all gets out instead of all over my kitchen? I can do that. And it means that you can't smell it. Aki smells I'm... the beef and all the beef stock and everything. He's over here going crazy. He's like, I want some. <laughs> yep. There, there we go. Take this Sprinkle right over it. the top of the roast. And then what you're doing with your quarter cup of beef broth is you're cleaning out your can to get all of that cream of mushroom Did out of there. Did you turn this on? Hmm? Did you turn this on? Yes. Okay. Just checking. Okay. And you are just going to drizzle this around. You don't want to knock all your um, packets off the top. And then your pepper jack cheese goes right on the top of this, mm -hmm. and you just want enough to cover your beef. And I don't know what it is about that cheese going on there, but it just it adds a flavor to it as well as it thickens up with that gravy. But if you are not a person who can handle spicy, I am so with you, and this doesn't add a huge kick of spice. Like it adds but flavor. A and a nice little hit, but it's not something that if you do not like spicy food or can't handle spicy food, that you won't be able to handle this. Right, like, we'll I that. totally eat this all the time. Now, you put a lid on it, and this is the most important thing. Other than the ingredients of this, one thing you got to realize, this is a beef roast. If you cook this on high, you totally can. It'll get done in a few hours, and it's probably going to taste great, but beef 
is so much better when you slow oh, cook it. Slow. This is a long recipe. In fact, Perfect last night. for if you have um, a long day out of yes. the house. Dinner will be done this is a back. 10 hour recipe. Mm -hmm. So last night I cooked one up so that we didn't have to wait 10 hours to do the rest of this show. But you want to put this on low for 10 hours and when you get done, you grab the wrong crock pot. This is a different recipe, oh don't pay goodness. attention to that. But I can't get the GoPro, it doesn't want to let go. <laughs> I'm serious. Let me grab this. Oh my word, my hands are not that strong apparently. And... I'm going to plug it back in so we still have that heat. Make sure we're good. Well, well, probably not. Nope. That's it. Lou just broke the GoPro. Uh, it goes well, to the side like that. There goes my paycheck for the next three weeks. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm going to keep this heat going on there because what we want to do next is you tell them, you grab the cheese and I'll grab this. Okay. Look at this. Check that out. This is what it looks like when it gets done. You look at it, you go, wow. Look at that mess on the top of that roast. That's what I thought. Same thing when I did the good gravy chicken until you stir it up, which is what I'm going to do now. By the way, right here. Hi. Where is it? So I am going to take this roast, which by the way, look, I'm going to take a spoon and it goes right through that roast. That's what 10 hours on low does. It breaks that meat down. It breaks all the connective tissue down. And you're left with just a super soft piece of meat. In fact, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna take some of this out and show you. Mmm, that is fall apart tender. But you wanna break that roast up and then that cheese that stayed on top, you wanna stir that in. And if it's not thick enough yet, Lou's over there in the fridge going, Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I took it out of the fridge already. You want to take your pepper jack cheese that's left over, and you want to stir that in there to your so desired thickness. Deal with folks. Oh my gosh, Lou, that smells so good. Okay, is our gravy thick enough? Okay, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. What do you think? That's a, I mean, I think that's up to to the the person making it. That's so how here's thick you the want thing: it. if your gravy is not thick enough to your liking. Then you'll just add in a couple of pieces. You can put them in whole or you can tear them up so that they'll uh, melt faster. And uh, just um, put them in there, stir them in, cover it, let it sit for another five to 10 minutes, maybe 15, it depends on how hot your slow cooker cooks. Yes. And then um, stir it up and check it again. And now when I stirred that cheese from the top into it, it thickened it up quite a bit. Yeah, that is it very, does a lot. I mean, look at that. That's, that's, that's great. A good gravy. That's, that's a good gravy. Very good. And that's what it looks like when it's done. So I'm not even going to worry about that other cheese. But what I am worried about is getting some of this in my belly. because It smells so good. And that little taste test I had a while ago was definitely You tasted it without enough. me? I did. I feel bad, but it tasted too good. Because it's good gravy chicken. Or, it's good gravy. It's good gravy roast. Oh roast. my goodness. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. Now, let's try that out and see. Slide this out of the way. Since you had me look that for it forever. That was 10 hours on low. And the rewards of this are going to be so good. My fork's going right, through, right straight through that meat. Mmm. Ah. I don't know what to tell you. I'll show you. Look at that. Check this out. That is fork tender. Super easy. I want to give every one of y'all a bite right now. That was mashed with mashed potatoes. Mm, that'd be good. Mm-hmm. Those mushrooms, just a subtle hint of mushroom in there. Of course, you get those little bits from the beefy mushroom soup. But it's creamy with that gravy, the way that cream of mushroom soup soaks down in there with it. That's just perfection. Mm -hmm. This? Okay, how about this, y'all? I'm going to say it like this. You know that for the past few years, we've been doing these videos. We've been doing all these different recipes. And anybody would always ask me and say, what is the most delicious favorite recipe on the site? And I would always say, and I still do, 
say Mississippi beef roast. Mm. First one that just knocked me off my off my feet, hands down, until now. <laughs> that is super tender. Super flavorful. The texture of that meat is perfect. It's got enough salt in it with your packets and mm -hmm. with your soups. There's no salt and pepper necessary. At the all. pepper jack cheese is giving it just, I don't even, there's not a heat to it. There's just a good flavor to it. Yeah. If you want some heat to it, you could always add more of the pepper jack cheese. You could add different things to, to give a heat to it. Maybe some hot sauce, maybe some red pepper flakes. To me right there, that mm. is absolutely, it's perfection. That is absolutely one of the best things I've ever had from our site. I'm gonna eat more of that. <laughs> I'm glad that we have two of them now. Yeah, because I'm taking that one mm. home. And that one's staying with me. I'm going to have that uh, it's right here. in about 10 <laughs> hours. Y'all, I cannot stress enough. Try this. That. Like, we have, actually, I've been making good gravy stuff all over the place. Um, I think we have, we have the good gravy chicken. We have good gravy um, beef roast. We have good gravy pork roast. We have good gravy pork chops. And I'll tell you what, they're all amazing. And... So, if... That's straight up home cooking right there, y'all. Right. I, you should take one of these out to your mama. I think I will. She would love that. I might go get another beef roast, because that was mine. <laughs> y'all, if you like what you're seeing here, and I promise you, you're gonna like that recipe, oh make sure you give us a like down below on this video. If you have not become a member of the Crock Posse, make sure that you click the subscribe button down below and be a welcome member of our Crock Posse. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. There's also a little bell next to the subscribe button called the Tingly. and that lets YouTube know that you want to see our videos right away make sure that you click that and we will send them to you as soon as we make them and most importantly y'all whatever you do laugh often eat good food and speak life bye y'all I am ready for a second and third helping of this it is so good if you want to see the latest click on the left right here if you feel like subscribing click on the right my dear and if you think we're